Welcome to WISC, where we give you a quick peek at the day's top stories. I'm Julia Manchester, in for Jamal Simmons. Happy Veterans Day, and from the WISC team, a special thank you to all of our veterans for their service. This week, buckle up because it's about to get busy. House investigators will go public with their impeachment inquiry. On today's show, 2020 candidates stand up for veterans. McConnell wants to confirm 30 judges by the end of this year. And former UN Ambassador Nikki Haley calls out two former key Trump officials. This is why you should care. Today, the nation is celebrating and honoring our military veterans, and with that, many 2020 Democrats are rolling out policy plans highlighting our service members. Here's where the candidates stand on policy involving our nation's veterans. Elizabeth Warren released her plan last week, and it covers a broad range of issues that impact military families and service members. From raising military pay and eliminating a military sexual assault to proposing policies to help veterans after their service has ended. Her plan also focuses on education by expanding the GI Bill and ensuring all veterans that their families have access to job training and degrees without taking on student debt. Warren says in a statement, a good education can open millions of doors for our service members. Presidential hopeful Bernie Sanders rolled out his veterans proposal this morning. According to his campaign, Sanders wants to improve on the health care provided to veterans by filling the nearly 50,000 vacancies in the Veterans Affairs Administration during his first year in office and providing $62 billion in funding to repair, modernize and rebuild the VA. He also aims to reform Veterans Affairs regulations that currently restrict care and benefits. Mayor Pete Buttigieg has also released a plan. He wants to name the first female VA secretary. Buttigieg is one of two presidential candidates who have served in the U.S. military, along with Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard. Here's why you should care. There's approximately 18 million veterans in the U.S. With escalating cases of post-traumatic stress disorder, homelessness, the threat of suicide, and all sorts of other issues our veterans face on a daily basis. How we care for those who put their lives on the lines for the country will be up to the next president of the United States. While House Democrats barrel on with an impeachment inquiry against President Trump, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is hoping to reset the narrative, confirming at least 30 conservative judicial nominees by the end of this year. Last Wednesday, President Trump held a White House celebration to honor the Senate leader for helping to get 150 federal judge vacancies filled, eclipsing the vacancies confirmed by former President Barack Obama at his three-year mark. Speaking on the floor last week, McConnell made it clear that the Democrats' effort to get Trump out of office will not stop his plans in the Senate. He said, quote, the Senate will continue its work on the personnel business and confirm more of the president's outstanding nominees to the Federal Judiciary Committee. McConnell is facing re-election next year, and his campaign team even came up with t-shirts to highlight his and the president's accomplishments. So why should you care? President Trump has had major success in filling court vacancies. Two of his Supreme Court nominees were confirmed, creating a conservative majority on the high court. And should McConnell succeed in securing 30 more conservative judicial nominees before 2020, it would boost the party-backed confirmations to almost 200. This was a campaign promise of Trump's, and going into an election year, it would bode well with his conservative base. Former United Nations Ambassador Nikki Haley claims two senior White House officials tried to enlist her in their effort to sideline President Trump. In her new memoir, With All Due Respect, Haley wrote former Secretary of State Rex Tillerson and former White House Chief of Staff John Kelly said they feared for the future of the country under Trump's presidency. The Washington Post obtained a copy of her memoir that is being released on Tuesday. In an excerpt from the book, she writes, Kelly and Tillerson confided in me that when they resisted the president, they weren't being insubordinate and that they were just trying to save the country. Haley did not accept their offer to join the effort to check the president. 
Tillerson hasn't responded, but Kelly told CBS Sunday morning, if by resistance and stalling she means putting a staff process in place, then guilty as charged. So why should you care? Since its beginning, the current administration has been a revolving door with 10 cabinet secretaries and 65 officials having departed. The White House has fanned rumors of dysfunction in the West Wing, but Haley's memoir seems to suggest otherwise. Later this week, the White House might have to continue playing defense when House Democrats pursue an impeachment inquiry, but for the first time, it will be in public. U.S. diplomat to Ukraine William Taylor will be the first witness to testify on the case alleging President Trump pressured Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky to investigate Joe Biden and his son. We'll have updates later this week. Thanks for watching Hill TV on YouTube. Be sure to click subscribe and hit the bell so you know when we post new videos and head to thehill.com for all the latest political news.